Just sing it. Stop playing. Just sing it. I just want to lick that face. I'm sorry, TMI. everyone welcome back to my channel Herrera here I hope that you are all doing well before we sit down and watch two dragons one of a kind concert together let's listen to the full album I know that I've heard I think almost all the songs on this album the only one that I can't really recall is light it up featuring tableau doesn't ring a bell maybe when I listen to it it will um I thought I'd focus on the lyrics there are two music videos in this that I've not seen previously and it's just fun let's go <laughs> wonder woman it's so pretty. Look at that makeup. I can't believe that I've listened to this song a million times and I didn't know it had a music video and that I've not sat and watched it already. I don't even know how to prepare myself for this, so I just know it's going to be wild. <laughs> Money again, so serious do not tell me that's him that's somebody else's body right though and then just when he turns around it's him why so serious? Jeez. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> How is that wig not falling off yet? That is so fun. It's so important to stop and take all of this in, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this must have been so fun to film. Well, at some point, I'm going to have to sit and watch all the high definition versions of these. The iconic moment. Get to his arm break. Painful, 
Maybe I haven't heard this either. I thought that I did. I only just heard him sing it with somebody else, obviously, other than Rose. But maybe I haven't. Oh. Oh, that sounds like Sunli. Am I pushing? Okay, I love it when he does this. So he's just given us one of a kind crayon. And then he's suddenly giving us this. This is like in his Kwon Jeong, where he's given us lots of different songs. He gave us bullshit. And then he gave us Untitled 2014 in the same album. It's that kind of a feel. He did it all the way from the beginning. <laughs> Oh, wow. This is so nice. I love, I love it when G sings. You know that. I don't need to tell you that. Okay, I love, okay, she sounds a little bit raw, a little bit undone. Um, obviously, I don't know at this point how popular she was, but she was, I guess, starting out. I don't know, was she a rookie at this point? Was she even a part of the group at this point? Who knows? Um, I'll wait for you to tell me. But she sounds very little, very innocent. And I love that. Just the beginnings of her voice. I've heard quite a lot of her covers and her on various shows and things like that. And um, her voice has come a long way. She had quite the stylized and unique sound even from the beginning, but it has come a long way, don't you think? I love the way that she's sounding in this. I think especially G, not necessarily being the most perfect singer, it's quite nice to have somebody who is quite singy. An interesting collaboration. <laughs> I wonder why he chose her. That chorus is to die for.
Mark Morris is to absolutely die for. I love this so much. I'm going to need him to perform this in 2023 with a slightly deeper voice. Like this was glorious. And I love Singer G. I love it that he threw in some high notes in the end there. How killer was that? This was just unexpected. A great collaboration, actually. And I do wonder where this came about, how this came about even, and why he chose Rosé as well. Really interesting. If you know, please comment below and tell me. How am I ever going to get over this song? I love it when he gets all singy and emotional and yeah, all of that. I love it. See Stalker? Remember the first time I heard this song? I loved it. Oh yes. That one? I don't want to hurt you. Why? Why is she talking to another man? Oh, I get it. He's a friend. Kind of creepy, though. <laughs> I just love that he's so openly swears in his songs. This album is so good. Seriously, you're telling me that on this album is Crayon, Without You, and then this song as well. Seriously, and we're not even halfway through. And today, oh my god. And today. I knew it. I don't know what to say. Now. I was gonna say that's Lisa, but I think it's Jenny. <laughs> she looks so young. That's slightly distracting. I'm sorry. Okay, this is slightly giving me the creeps. He definitely is coming across a lot older than her, and I'm not trying to start any trouble, I promise. But it's um, the story that he's telling, and I just don't like it. It kind of gives me the feel, a creepy feel of, like, grooming. I know it's not that. But that stalkerish kind of a feel as well. Yeah. Why does it sound like he's speaking French? <laughs> he is just manipulating her. I'm talking characters here. Let's be really, really clear about that. This man is a genius. Love the ad libs. That is just creepy. It's giving me the chills. I don't like it. finally get to listen to the original version. So this is the one that Are You came in for? Yeah. 
He sounded a lot grittier in his younger days, didn't he? Wow. I can see why Ayu was asked to guest on stage and sing this song. There's a similar brightness, sharpness. Mm. Love it. Such a simple thing to do, isn't it? It's almost like giving me that feel of, you know how sometimes artists use sampling and it it sounds like a sample of an old song that might have something to do with the quality of Kim Yuna's voice, but um, it's given me that feel. I can imagine G doing that. The problem with having an album like this is what then becomes a title track. I am absolutely stumped. There is no filler on this album. I love everything intensely so far. Um, it's just so good. And I think because this was his first album as well, he was trying lots of different things, testing the waters, really putting lots of different styles out there and seeing what the response would be. And that's really interesting. So although I would say that, yeah, he's talking about relationships, there isn't really a coherence in the overall, like from track to track, where, for example, if I were to listen to a Taeyang album, I would get a little bit more of that maybe. And for example, Kwon Ji Yong, I do get that. Um, but in this, it is a little bit all over the place, but I'm happy to be all over the place for this man. Okay, I had to give in and watch one of the live performances. It's because I love this song so much. I have listened to this nonstop since I discovered it. And I used to get a sneaky peek. <laughs> Don't worry, you are as gorgeous as ever. Have I just given away the best part of this concert? He's so hot for this. I'm gonna explode. Then what? 
Then what's gonna happen? Who's gonna clear up this mess? For God's sake, would you just look at him? It's a sin for a man to be this gorgeous. So he's singing over the voice of Kim Jong Un. I'd love to look him up. He has a sweet voice. talk about the crowd for just a second i think big bang are the only group so far that i have witnessed with my very eyes i'm sure there are other groups out there that pull the same number of people that they do as a group when they go out and they do this solo stuff like honestly their concerts is crazy and it's i feel like some of it is the big bang pull factor however they don't really perform very many big bang songs in their solo concerts so it can't be just that right they are just magical all of them Just sing it. Stop playing, just sing it. Just wanna lick that face. I'm sorry, TMI. The verses are such a statement on either side of that sweet chorus. Robots, G. You know, you've got too much repetition on your voice. What was that? Okay. I don't care I'm rocking my life away. So you can't stop The original track doesn't have it. Have I just accidentally watched the encore stage? That was really accidental. Do I want to continue? I feel like I'm just going to end it here just because this is a massive spoiler. I've probably just, I've watched the best bit of this entire concert that was going to really shock me, haven't I? Have I ruined it for myself? There's no way. I absolutely love this. I love this song. I've listened to it nonstop. I love the lyrics. I love the difference between the verse and the chorus. And I really love it. Kim Jong-un's voice as well, the sweetness of it, but I actually really love when G sings on top of that voice. I do not like the 
effect on his voice in this performance. I don't know why it's there. It's unnecessary. But if he wants to do it, then go for it. I'm here for it. And I just want to say a quick prayer and hope uh, that he comes back like this, with this energy, with this look at some point, and um, keep creating songs like this. Like, can you believe that this album was crayon without you, that XX, and today? Like, what the hell do you want? Now, here's the moment of truth. Have I or have I not heard this previously? <laughs> I'm going to go with no. What do you think? Yeah, I haven't heard this before. Sorogitan <laughs> Pablo is such a big talker in his raps. So Epic High are not a YG creation, right? However, at some point they did join the company. And I feel like at that point, they, Tableau was just told, you need to collab with Taehyung, you need to collab with GD. And he literally had like five minutes to do it. And that's how this song came about. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's kind of at the moment Tableau heavy. Is that about to change? I spoke too soon. <laughs> that sexy F bomb on me again. Do you think he's different depending on who he collabs with? I'm guessing that Tablet wrote his own verse. Oh, so American. A very random question right in the middle of this video, but has G-Dragon and Hanbin ever collaborated? I don't think that I've ever heard anything from the two of them together, and I really want to. Okay, my question is, do you think that every single song is title track worthy or is it because it's G-Dragon? Is that the case? Do you think that if these songs belong to somebody else, I would love them as much? But there's just something like literally pick anything out of this album and it could have had a music video. It could have been 
so popular, an absolute hit. He's just a hit making machine, isn't he? This was an interesting collaboration. I've just kind of figured it out. He's a big talker. He is, but you know what? Sometimes I get fed up of cars, money, and talking about everything that you own, like just your estate, for example. It gets a little bit boring, and that is what some English speaking rappers do. But what he also has is a sensitive side, and I love it when he pours all of that inside one album. That is one hell of a roller coaster ride. This album is, I mean, I'm yet to hear all of his albums, but this is my most favorite album from him. It's experimental, it's a big talking album. It is killer track after killer track, and I love the music videos. I think Freyon is such a special song, it will never age grow old, get boring, none of it. And that music video was killer. Him being a woman, a sexy ass woman, like I am here for it. Please, if you want to be a woman, do it. I will still love you. Um, And I will still find you insanely hard. I think, I can't wait to hear about with you, without you even, because I want to know how that came about. That's really interesting. And I rank my favourite songs. I think if I do overall, Today is my most favourite song on this album, followed closely by that XX and then Crayon, Without You, One of a Kind, Missing You and Lighting Up, kind of same. But if I talk about what I've heard today, which is literally only two songs, I will say that Without You is so beautiful. There was a space in my life for that. There was emptiness because I didn't know that Without You existed. My life is no longer empty. I think I like this collab. I don't know much about Doc 2. I'll have to look him up a little bit. And I don't know anything about Kim Jong-un either. I'll look him up as well. Some interesting voices, some interesting, interesting discoveries during this album. And damn right. They're all written, co-written, composed by him. You can tell. His stamp all over that. Talk to me about the songs he has included on this album, the track listing, the collaborations, the music videos. I didn't talk about that XX music video. It's quite uncomfortable. I don't really know the full meaning behind that. I guess the more that I listen to it, the more that I focus on the lyrics, I'll be able to make sense of it. But it was a little bit eerie. You know, when you manipulate someone, like I said, when you groom somebody and it just gave me that eerie kind of a feeling. It wasn't necessarily a friend falling in love with somebody and wanting them to notice them. It was kind of like in a controlling manner. And that was acted out beautifully by the two of them as well. I could really notice an age difference between G and Jenny in that as well. Um, She looked so young and maybe it was supposed to be that way because now I'm thinking, why didn't he just pick somebody that was, that looked more his age, but maybe that was the point. She was supposed to look manipulated. Really, really interesting. It's just broadened my mind on who G Dragon is as an artist and who I have been thinking he was. He is so much more than that. He continues to be so much more than that. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to my channel for lots more content. Like the video if you liked it, of course. And until I see you next time, take care. Stay safe. Bye.